The next few properties we're talking about are alignment properties, which um, allow you to align um, and space out these flex items within the container. The first one is gonna be justify content. So if we come to MDN, um, here's the formal definition, and we'll come down to the formal definition here and see that the initial value is normal. If we read about what normal is, it says the items are packed in their default position as if no justify content value was set. So that's kind of what you're seeing here. It's all just kind of by default at the start of that axis. Now, similarly, if we set the justify content property to start, this is going to achieve the same thing. So we're just putting it at the start. So for all intents and purposes, you can think of the default property for justify content to be start. If we wanted all of the flex items to go to the end of the main axis rather than the start, we can just type that into this property. So if we replace this with end, you'll see that all of these jump to the right side. And you'll see that as we're looking on the main axis, that's how we're deciding where these items are gonna go. We're flowing horizontally, so the start is the left side and the end is the right side. We can also change this to um, center, which is going to put them right in the middle. And then we have some additional property values that will actually space the items out a little bit. The first one is going to be space between. So if we type space between, these are going to be spaced out with equal amount of white space between them within the container. We also have a property called space around. So if we change this to that, you'll see that there is now some space surrounding each of these items on the main axis. Now what I'll have you notice here is that the amount of space between the items, so this little area here and here, those are all going to be equal in dimension. But the edges, so to the right of this fourth element and to the left of the first, that's a little bit smaller than the space between the elements. So that's kind of the uh, how we distinguish the space around property value with the space evenly property value. So when I type space evenly, you'll see that these change just a little bit. And now what's happening is every piece of white space between the elements are going to be exactly equal. So the justify content property tells us how the items are spaced out and aligned on the main axis. Let's go ahead and set this back to start because I wanna have the default values so that now we can talk about the next property, which is the align items property. Let's go ahead and look this up in MDN. We'll type in align items. And you'll see that this is the property that we use when we want to align flex items on the cross axis. So remember, we set this example to a flex direction of row by default. And that means that the main axis is horizontal and cross is vertical. So the align items always applies to the cross axis and is going to decide how these items are aligned vertically. Looking at the MDN docs, you'll see that the initial value is again normal. And if we go to normal, wherever that is, um, I guess it's at the top here. It says the effect of this keyword is dependent on the layout mode we are in. As you can see in the third bullet point, it says for flex items, the keyword behaves as stretch. And if we come down to stretch, it says the flex items are stretched such that the cross size of the item's margin box is the same as the line while respecting width and height constraints. That's an overly confusing way to say that by default, the align items, if we set it to normal, is going to stretch the height of these items to the total height of the flex container, unless you have a specific height set on those items already. So this brings us to a brief discussion on the width and height properties of flex items. Right now, we don't have any width or height set on either or any of these flex items right here. So they're getting, I guess, what you call the defaults. And with Flexbox, um, a flex item is by default going to get the width of its inner content and the height is going to stretch to be equal to the total height of the flex container. 
As you can see, the inner content is gonna be the numbers that we've put in here. And I know there's a little space there, but it's still considered just the inner content. And then the height is of course the height of the full flex container. Now, if we come down to flex item number one and we give it a width of say 100 pixels, it's no longer going to have that default width of the content. It's going to respect that width that we've set on it. Likewise, if we give it a height of say 50 pixels, it's going to respect that height as well. So if you put explicit width and height properties on your flex items, by default, they're going to get those so long as there's not you know, overflow within the flex container or you've set different properties that we're gonna talk about in just a bit. Just as a quick review, the items here, the flex items do not have explicit width or height properties. And therefore, the default height that a flex item is gonna get is going to be the total size of the cross axis. So in this case, the main axis is row, cross is column, so total height of that column is gonna be the natural height. This is no longer the case when we start putting in different values for the align items. So once we put in something like flex start, you're gonna see that all of these items pull up to the top of the cross axis and they no longer have that total height of the cross axis. And what's happening here is they just have the width and height of the inner content. So if we change that inner content, then it's going to adjust the size. So one way we could do that, let's say that we have this first um, flex item, we'll come all the way to the bottom, and I'm going to uncomment this uh, little rule that I wrote that made the font size for this first item much larger. And you can see that as we make the content bigger or smaller, the flex item itself gets bigger or smaller because we don't have those explicit width or height properties. Now I'm gonna leave that there because it's going to bring up a very good point here in a second. So right now we have flex start. We can also um, bring these down on the cross axis to flex end. So these are at the end now. And then we can center them with center. And this is actually something that's really hard to do without Flexbox. So really cool uh, part of this Flexbox model. What you'll see with the center is that there's like an imaginary horizontal line going through the middle of the content in these uh, flex items. But we also have this property value called baseline. And what's gonna happen here is we actually draw that horizontal line kind of at the, at the bottom of each piece of content within the flex item. So because this first one has much bigger inner content, our flex baseline is going to be in a different spot. So they're not gonna be perfectly aligned flush with the top of that cross axis. So far, we've learned a couple of properties, justify content and align items. So we can play around with these. Let's just do a few examples so that we can kind of review and recap. So let's go ahead and say, justify content will be center and align items will also be center. This is how you can take content flex items and put them in the middle of a container. And this was very difficult to do before Flexbox. So this is a really cool advantage of having Flexbox. Um, and then we can of course change all of these. So we can put the justify content to end and put that there. We can also put align items to flex end. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but you can put it at the bottom right corner of the container. So very flexible, no pun intended, of what we can do here with these alignment properties. Let me reset everything. Let's just put these back to the defaults. So all you have to do is delete them and they're back to their defaults. And then we will come down here and comment out this uh, last rule that changes the font size of that first item. So now everything is equal. And what I wanna do is actually make each of these items a specific width and height. We'll go with 50 pixels by 50 pixels. Um, one way that we can do that, since we have two classes set here and each flex item has this FI class, we can just target that one class, give it a width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. And now we have these perfect little squares sitting as our flex items. By default, if you don't change any properties, 
Flexbox will respect the flex item width and height properties. So we set those to 50 pixels by 50 pixels and that's what we're getting right here. And if we came down to the flex container again and we set that align items property to say stretch or something like that, you'll see that they're not actually going to stretch down to the total height because we have those explicit properties set already. But the next thing I wanna explore is what happens if you have too many or too little uh, flex items within your flex container. In this example, if you remember from a few minutes ago when we talked about the, actually it's at the top here, we set the width of the flex container to 408 and the height to 200 pixels. Because the main axis is horizontal as a result of the flex direction equal to row property, um, the width is really all that we care about right here because everything is going in the width kind of direction. So we set this to 408 exactly for the example I'm about to show you. If you've got a container 408 pixels wide and that container has a four pixel border on the left and the right, then the total white space that is available for these flex items is exactly 400 pixels. If each of our boxes are 50 pixels in width, that means that we can fit a total of eight flex items perfectly within this container. Let's go ahead and do that just to see what I'm talking about. So all we have to do is copy this down four and more times and you should see uh, a bunch of items pop up here. Let me just go ahead and change the labels so that we can see all our flex items a little bit better. And now you can see that we have eight items perfectly fitting within our flex container. But what happens if we take all of these flex items and we double it. So let's say instead of eight flex items of 50 pixels each, we have 16, so we double it. What happens then? Well, let me go ahead and do that real quick. I'll just copy all of these items and paste them below. And what you're gonna see as we extend this is that these items are overflowing outside of the flex container. There's a couple weird things going on as well. If you'll notice, it doesn't look like these items are 50 pixels wide anymore. Now, of course, if you were wondering how wide these elements are, you don't have to guess. You can right click inspect element and you're dropped into the Firefox dev tools. And the reason I'm in Firefox, I know I've been switching back and forth between Chrome and Firefox throughout this series, but I'm in Firefox because the dev tools have an awesome Flexbox um, little module here that you can inspect elements with and really see what's going on. So all we have to do is come up to this uh, inspector here. We click that so that we can select items on the page. And let's first start with our overall flex container. When we click that flex container, the layout tab is gonna drop us down into this section called flex container. Um, if you uh, collapse that, you'll see that there's also grid in the box model. So these are different you know, models that we can look at. But if we look at flex container and then we toggle this little button, you can see all of the different flex items outlined for you as well as some overflow space and other elements of the flex box. We'll turn this off for now, but we can also go down to the flex items and you can see they're being highlighted here on the left um, as I hover over them. So you can click them with this little inspector here. So maybe we click on number eight um, and we can look here within the inspector of everything that's going on with this individual flex item. We're going to talk more about all of this stuff um, in just a bit. We're not quite ready yet. The thing that I want to draw your attention to is the fact that if we go down to the box model, which we learned about in previous lessons, we know all about how this works, um, and you look at the total size of a single element. So we'll click on number four you'll see that the dimensions are 33 and a half by 50, which is not what we set them to. We set them to 50 pixels wide and 50 pixels tall. So the question is, why is it shrinking the width? Like we didn't tell it to do that, why is that happening? Furthermore, if these are overflowing outside of the container, what do we do about that? We obviously don't wanna show this to our users. We don't want our flex items just going indefinitely off the page. And especially if you're making, say, a grid of images where there's hundreds of images and you're using Flexbox to display them, you don't want them going on a single axis, you know, indefinitely to the right or indefinitely down. In this situation, you have two options. 
The first option is kind of the standard um, default way of handling overflow in CSS. And this does not, this is not specific to Flexbox itself. You can use this with any type of CSS display type. So if I came to the flex container and I set the overflow property, I can set this to a couple of values, but usually you might want to set it to auto. And if you set it to auto, what's gonna happen is these elements are no longer gonna break outside of that container. They're just going to scroll. So you see the scroll bar at the bottom of our flex container now, and we can see all of our items they're still shrunk a little bit, but we can see them all without you know, breaking out of the container. But like I said, with that grid of images example, if we could imagine that these are images, we don't want our users to have to scroll left and right to see all the images. We want them to just wrap down to the next line and just have like a nice little grid of images. So the second option that you have here, instead of setting the overflow property, which is just a generic solution, we can set this flex wrap property. And if we set it to wrap, you'll see what happens is these elements go back to their you know, original size of 50 by 50 as we intended. And they're going to perfectly wrap onto the next line. Now you see some white space in here, here in the middle. And you might say, okay, I don't really want that. I want those to be flush to each other. So naturally what you're gonna do is come down to the flex container you're gonna type in align items like we had said earlier, and you'll type in flex start, something like that. And you won't see anything happen. And the reason is because the uh, rules of the game just changed when we put in this flex wrap property. I know you're probably um, getting tired of hearing me say that, but as we go through CSS, certain properties set to certain values change the whole game. Just like when we set Flexbox to the container, you know, it changes the behavior of all the uh, children elements within it. This flex wrap property changes how we align items on the cross axis. So instead of align items, we now have to use this property called align content. So if flex wrap is set to anything other than the default, which is gonna be no wrap, you'll see it overflows again. If it's set to anything except for this no wrap, then we're gonna use, instead of align items, we're gonna use align content, which is gonna have the same um, possible values for the most part as align items, but it's going to tell um, Flexbox how to arrange this new like group of wrapped items within the Flex container. So now we can set Flex start, or we could wrap them at Flex end, or even put them right in the center of everything. So that's how we wrap items to the next line if they're overflowing. At this point, we've actually covered all of the flex container uh, properties that we can use. Just to do a very quick review, I'll get rid of all this extra stuff here. So get rid of these last eight um, flex items, and then I'll get rid of these last two properties here. So just to review, we have, of course, the display flex, which is going to activate Flexbox. We have the flex direction, which we can set to either row or column. So if we set it to column, it's gonna go vertical. If we set it to row, it's gonna go horizontal. We have justify content, which aligns uh, flex items on the main axis. In this case, the horizontal axis. We can set that to center, um, which is not gonna change anything because it's as wide as the container itself. But if we just comment it out this last flex item, you'll see how this works. It kind of centers all of the content in the middle. And then we have align items. We can also put center on that to put those in the middle. And then of course we have flex wrap and align content if that applies when you have flex items overflowing outside of the container.